hello! Last week we've set up our August bullet journal cover, monthly layout and trackers in a dynamic C theme with homemade stamps and so on. And this week it's time to plan the C themed weeklies. Seahorses, jellyfish, octopus and starfish are all waiting for you to join me. Of course, as always, I have to invite you to like and subscribe this video so more people can see it, otherwise it will just be buried underneath the YouTube algorithm. First I decided on the layouts and which animals to use in which spread. Then everything was roughly sketched and inked. I used markers for the titles and the boxes so they stand out nicely. These are pit pens that are permanent once dry. I stamped blue circles for the dates with another homemade stamp from Fun Foam, but you could just draw them and color in the circles as well. At last I added dates into the circles with white jelly pen. I inked over the pencil lines of the seahorse and later painted it with watercolors. I usually do the inking of all the pages first and then add the color to all of them. This just speeds up the process and I also enjoy this kind of work more because I fall into it and don't want to change media just when I got used to one. On the next spread I sketched the positioning of the different parts and then tried my hand at modern bouncy style of brush calligraphy that I'm terrible at, as you can see. But that doesn't stop me from using it. It's my journal, my rules. Then I added those blue circles with my DIY stamp again because the bubbly circles fit the sea theme and I like them. I drew the jellyfish with fine liners, first the top and then the tentacles. Then I saw the stamped circles were a bit too wonky for my liking and they could use a darker edge, so I went over it with a darker blue marker. I think it was indigo pit pen. Lastly, I added some shadows to the title and a wavy underlining to the days of the week. Then I colored everything in with watercolors. I started with a pink wash over the jellyfish hood or bell and tentacles. Then I switched to light violet to add some variation in color. I love variety and I love color, what can I say? Lastly, I added violet to the hood in a stylized way that's very easy to draw and paint. For the third week, I sketched the octopus first and then went over it with fine liner and lastly, I colored it. I don't follow my sketch that tightly because it is kind of boring to just trace over it. So I sketch very loosely and give myself the permission to change anything I want. Sometimes that's a bad decision, but mostly I like it better. It definitely keeps me more interested and that's a good thing. This is my favorite spread this month and my kids also love it best. It usually takes me a few pages to really get into the groove and come up with something unique and still functioning. I don't remember whose explanation this was but I really like it. He said that it's not hard to have a unique idea. The jelly skyscraper is very unique but it wouldn't make any sense. It's the same with most unique ideas because the useful ones have usually already been tried so it's hard to find a unique idea that works. And normally we have to get the easier ones out first so we make the space for the weirder ones. I would have think it's just me had I not seen so many other artists talk about it. I wrote in the abbreviations and added the stamped circles as previously followed by jelly pen dates in white. Same old, same old. Then I colored my octopus with watercolors. This took some time because the whole spread is painted. So keep that in mind when you paint your spreads. This is sped up 20 times. It takes me just as long as it takes you. <laughs> this time I followed the smart rule of starting with the lights and first colored in the wooden boards that my octopus tore from the shipwreck shown on the cover of the bullet journal. You can watch how I made the cover in my previous video. I'll put it in the card and in the description below. I really like the idea of connecting spreads with the story. I have to do that more often. Next I painted her head with light purple and then the rest of the body with a darker violet color. If you don't have violet watercolor, it's very easy to mix from ultramarine blue and carmine or scarlet red, the cold red and the warm blue. Octopuses have a membrane between their tentacles at the top where the tentacles meet the body and membranes are more translucent, so I use lighter shade for that part. I shaded octopus body a bit where things overlap and added edges and some wood grain to the boards to make them more realistic. This should be done fairly lightly so that it won't be distracting. 
We'll use the boards for our dailies and the writing should show and clearly read for the budget to be functional. But I'm showing you the painting of each spread separately because it makes more sense to see the completion of every page. I think it's easier to follow and more interesting to watch. If you disagree, let me know, of course. <laughs> I can swap it around. Lastly, I added some highlights to her head and eyes with white uniball pen. For the last spread, I used the light blue marker and stamp pad for the circles and added three starfish. As you probably know, three elements on a page usually look nice, so I went with that. I didn't want to have too many starfish on my page since I colored them bright red as they are found in nature here. Too many of these bright red would be distracting to me, so I just limited the illustrations here. If you're a bit intimidated by drawing everything out, you could also use stamps or stickers here. After inking the starfish with my technical pen, you could have used fine liner as well, I erased the pencil lines on all of the spreads and just painted everything in with watercolors. In this spread, I started with a bright cadmium red, that is the bright real red red, as my daughter calls it, and added some darker edges with a cold red. I think it's carmine. I should have colored in the rock the last starfish is sitting on, but I totally forgot to. I'll do that now. And here's the final flip through of the whole month. I really enjoyed this sea theme, as you probably have guessed already. I could easily have one bullet journal that has only sea theme all year around. I can already see the fish in Christmas hats and, and seals jumping out of the icy water and so on. It would be really fun, actually. I'm not sure if that's a useful or just unique idea. You're welcome to tell me in the comments. I hope to see you next week with some more summer fun when we'll paint mandalas on stones. Have fun. See ya.